uh, this video is going to cover uh, problems involving multiple right triangles. So for example, this one here, you can see I've got two right triangles. Uh, the title here is using a common side to solve a problem. So uh, if you look at these two triangles, they do have a common side, uh, which is this guy right here. That is going to be the key to, to solving this problem. So what I want to do is find the length of side PQ. So that's this side here. And if you look, if I ignore this triangle uh, on the right, I'm just going to cover it up very quickly. If I ignore this triangle and I just focus on the one on the left, there's no way that I have enough information to solve for the height of that triangle, right? I've got an angle, but I don't have enough information on the sides. Um, sorry, I'm trying to solve for this side, uh, but there is no way that I can solve for that side. Okay, so what I would need to do is use the triangle on the right, which has enough information to solve for this height, which I could then use uh, in the triangle on the left. So that's the procedure I'm going to use here. Okay, so I'm just going to pick on that triangle on the right. I've just duplicated it uh, off to the right here. Okay, so if I take a look at that angle, uh, I, I'm interested in the opposite side. That's my shared side. So I'm just going to label that as O. That's the shared side. And I have what's called the adjacent side, or the side next to my angle. I, I don't have my hypotenuse, but it's not really important for this problem. Uh, what I have here is the opposite and the adjacent. I've got some angle. What I want to do is use the tan ratio, and I can write this as PR over 6.1, the opposite side over the adjacent side with respect to that 72 degree angle. If I multiply the 6.1 up to the other side, I've solved for PR. And if I just punch this into my calculator, if I'm in degree mode, I should get uh, 18.7739. I just kept four decimal places here. Okay, so I now have that shared side, and I know that that is 18.7739. Okay, I'm just going to put that on my triangle uh, just to remind us that we do have that piece of information. Okay, that's the height of this triangle. All right, so now, like I said, that is going to help us uh, solve for the hypotenuse, which is PQ, in the second triangle. Okay, so now I'm going to pick on that second triangle, and, and you can see here, if I'm interested in the hypotenuse, this guy, I've got the opposite which is this one, All right? So I've got opposite and hypotenuse. So you kind of have to think if I'm, if I'm dealing with so Katoa, which trig ratio would involve the opposite and the hypotenuse? Well, definitely the sine ratio will work. So I'm going to write my sine ratio. I'm going to say the sine of that 38 degree angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. I got to do a little bit of fancy algebra here. Uh, you can just take this PQ, multiply it up to the other side while dividing the sine 38 to the other side. You can just kind of switch those two. Uh, and you've got a nice little expression here that you can type into your calculator. If you're in degree mode and you punch this in, you should get 30.5. Okay, so we've solved for the side length, PQ. Remember, this was just using a, a common side to solve a problem. So we started on the right side, we solved for that side, and we applied it to the, to the triangle on the left. Okay, another example here, using a straight angle. This requires you to know a little bit about straight lines and their angle measurements. Um, you should know, going into this video, that the, the measurement of a straight line, if I go from one side to the other, this, this would be 180 degrees. So we're going to use that fact in this, in this problem here. Okay, so the question says, determine the side length, or sorry, the length of side T, ST, which will be this side right here, to the nearest tenth. So again, if you take a look at this triangle, your instinct should be to dive into this triangle, because that's the triangle with ST. We definitely don't have enough information to solve for that. In fact, we don't actually have any information about this triangle. So we're going to jump back to the triangle on the left. And we're going to analyze this guy and, and think about what, what could we do with this triangle to find some information that would carry forward into the triangle on the right. Okay, so take a look at the triangle on the left. I've just rewritten it for you. The only piece of information that would be helpful here would probably be the angle U right here. Okay, if I can solve for that angle, right, I, I would then be able to use this 115 degree angle and my new angle to find, <coughs> excuse me, this angle here. With this angle, I do have some information that's going to help me solve this problem. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a look at this angle and I'm going to say, okay, I've got the adjacent side, I've got the side next to the angle, and I've got the hypotenuse. I don't have the opposite side, but it doesn't matter for this problem. I'm going to use the cosine ratio that relates the adjacent to the hypotenuse. And in order to solve for my angle U, I've got to take the cos inverse of both sides. Sorry, my font's getting a little bit staggered here, but I think you get the idea. So I'm going to take the cos inverse. Punching that into my calculator in degree mode gives me 44.4 degrees. So I now know this angle is 44.4 degrees. Well, that's enough information for me to learn that this angle U in this triangle 
uh, would be 180. If I take 180 degrees, I subtract out my new angle and my given angle, I should be able to get 20.6 degrees. So that's useful for us. Okay, so the other thing I need is I need some sort of understanding of uh, a side length in my triangle. So what I've done here is I've taken this whole distance from B to T and I've subtracted out this distance from B to U. That should leave me with whatever remains as this distance here. So that's what I've done here. I've taken 40, I've subtracted 15, and I've got 20. I'm just going to quickly label that on my, on my triangle. All right, I've just copied this for you. So you can see I've got my new angle, I've got my new side length. This is definitely enough information for me to solve for that, that height of that triangle ST. With respect to this angle, I'm looking for the opposite. Sorry, my computer's kind of freezing here. I'm looking for the opposite. I have the adjacent. Okay, so what I can do is pick uh, a trig ratio based on what I have here. Opposite over adjacent would be the tan ratio. Uh, and if I've got opposite over adjacent, I've got ST over 25, multiplying 25 to the other side. Punching that expression into my calculator will give me 9.4 for ST.